Welcome, my friends, to an evening with Dr. Schultz. That's me, my favorite person. <laughs> Always working on myself, my self-esteem. Thank you for coming. Tonight is really all about you. Tonight is an, a chance, an opportunity for you to ask me questions about your health, about getting well, healing disease, uh, about parts of your body, about a bump on your Aunt Hazel's butt. <laughs> um, so you can ask me questions about herbal formula and the herbs in them and how they work and dosages or my natural healing routines or anything like that. And so it's really, tonight's about you, hi. It's great to see a lot of faces that I know. And um, that's what we're going to do. People sometimes ask me, what do you do? And I think about it, and if I was to put it in a sentence, I know how to help people heal diseases and create powerful health naturally. That's the key. Because there's a lot of people that say they can heal diseases by just cutting them out and poisoning them out and burning them out and making them go away. Um, there's a lot of people out there that have theories and ideas. Um, I'm always fascinated when we think movie stars and sports figures know anything except for being a movie star and a sports figure. Just because someone wears hip fashion doesn't mean they know anything about health. And I can talk like this because remember they were all my patients in my clinic. But I'm always a little bit surprised when these people that maybe go outside the box with what they dress like or with the music that they write or what movies they act in or how they play sports but when it comes to everything else in their life they're straight as an arrow they wear the greatest fashion but they have a headache they take drugs to make the pain go away they get a fever they suppress it they get cancer they cut it out and I'm not saying there's anything wrong or bad about that but what I am saying is you have to be careful when you're listening to supposed authority figures. And you have to read between the lines. A lot of people in here have seen this book, The Zone. It sold millions and millions of copies in the United States. And millions of people have followed this program. And many of them got very ill. I was looking through this book and it says, real life cooking. Obviously not everyone is a cook, including me. This is the author. In fact, most of my cooking techniques involve turning the microwave on in my house uh, and uh, warming up frozen convenience meals. So here's what's on the zone. Lean cuisine, homestyle chicken and peanut sauce, healthy choice, homestyle classic barbecue ribs. Um, uh, Lean Cuisine Meat Lasagna, Beef Szechuan, Budget Gourmet, Light and Healthy Roast Beef, La Menu, Beef Sirloin Tips, and Beef Stew. Here's another page, Fast Food in the Zone, Burger King, Acceptable. Jack in the Box, uh, Eat the Chicken Fajita Pita. Uh, go to McDonald's and get two small regular hamburgers and throw out the bun. Or go to Wendy's and that's hot and juicy and fine too. Guiltless pleasures, even the most delicious uh, things can be on the zone. Uh, here's a half cup of haagen ice cream, one Snickers bar, uh, a 12 ounce bottle of beer, and a small piece of Boston cream pie. <laughs> well, no wonder he sold millions of copies of this book, my <laughs> friends. You can basically eat anything you want that's funky, that's gonna clog your arteries and give you cancer and you're on the zone. And I always told my patients, you're gonna look hot in the casket if you follow something like this. But what do we know about Barry Sears? I don't know, usually to find out about an author, I slip to the back flap where it clearly states, Barry Sears is a pioneer in biotechnology that develop, he develops drug delivery systems for cancer chemotherapy drugs. What does it say about nutrition? What does it say about diet and food? Nothing. Do you have to know anything about what you're talking about to write a book? No. I went in, uh, 
I think it was Barnes & Noble the other day to look at books about how to become a millionaire. And I looked for how many books in that section, there were over a thousand, that were written by a person who made a million bucks. And I could only find two, and one of them was J. Paul Getty. Um, so the other 998 books that I saw were written by people that were hoping to make a million bucks by selling you a book about how to make a million bucks. Okay? So the point that I'm making here is always qualify your authors, the material you're reading. There's a lot of material out there. A hundred years ago, the average person in America saw one piece of paper a day. Today you see 200 pieces of paper a day. You are bombarded, and I'm not even talking about the internet, and the radio, and television, and movies. You are bombarded with information. You must not jump to conclusions. You have to qualify it. So what I know is how to get people well. Okay, I know how to help people, teach people, and prod people, and put my foot up people's butt so they can heal themselves naturally. If any of you ask me any questions about growing hair, I will refuse to answer. <laughs> Do I look like a good person to ask that question to? A person came up and said to me, uh, Dr. Schultz, I'm not sick. I've never been sick. I feel great. But I just want to make sure that I continue to feel great. And what would you suggest as a baseline or a fundamental or a foundational program for me to stay on? So I thought that I would talk a little bit about that for the next couple minutes, just to give you an idea of what I expect out of most people if they want to be healthy, stay healthy, and remain healthy. Step number one is what's going in your mouth. In fact, we could move this blackboard around uh, a little bit here, because um, I have some notes on here that you, you know, that might help you and refer to you. I have my stop and start in four categories that we're going to work with all night long. But the first thing you want to look is nutrition. Nutrition is what makes this thing here, makes this thing. It builds the flesh, and, and, and it's what you are made from. So if you grow up and live on beer and pizza, you're walking around beer and pizza thing. And, um, and that doesn't work as good as someone who maybe eats fruits and vegetables a lot. And so what nutrition makes your body operate the best? Well, I'm just going to give you some basics here at the beginning before we get into questions. But I saw one thing in my healing experience and in my, oh, I don't know how many years now, it's been my whole life that I spent helping people heal themselves. And the number one thing that I've seen is fresh live food, especially organic and especially raw and vegan. Okay, this is food that's loaded with vitamins, minerals, enzymes, amino acids, plenty of protein, no worries there, and it will build your body and keep you running healthy and strong with the least amount of exhaust or afterburn or pollution in your body as you utilize this material. Um, people think that I'm like some anti-beef advisory board or anti-dairy industry person. I'm not. But the number one way that most of you in here are going to die is cardiovascular disease, heart disease, stroke, heart attacks. The number two is cancer, neoplasms, malignancies in your body. And animal food has been directly linked to both those diseases, causing both those diseases. Now, the Chinese eat beef and pork, but they eat a pound a week per family of four. We eat a pound in a freaking sitting. Okay, and our indulgence and overindulgence and that kind of food is what's causing the health problems in America. Uh, the number one cause of death, heart disease, is mainly because of fatty blood, thick blood that your heart can't pump. You want to thicken your blood, eat animal foods and byproduct and dairy and eggs. Cholesterol alone, I mean, is so hardening. Uh, has anybody in here ever had an egg thrown on their car at Halloween? Am I the only one that gets them? Okay, one more man. It's hard to get off. In fact, it etches your paint. In fact, I was in Venice, Italy, and the buildings in Venice have stood for 900 years in water, and they're made with chicken eggs and dirt. Okay, there's a wonderful reason not to put those things in your body. 
So the number one cause of death is directly related to animal foods and the fats in the animal foods that we can't handle. The number two cause of death is directly related to breast cancer and prostate cancer are both linked to animal food. When you're young to develop breasts and prostates and, and sexual organs and reproductive organs, you need growth hormones that naturally occur in your body. But when you consume the growth hormones of like a cow that's designed to grow from zero to 2,000 pounds in a year, imagine what that's doing to you when you take on those growth hormones. And even if that cow hasn't been injected with steroids and hormones, which is very rare, just the ones that are naturally present will affect you. And if you think by eating, you know, range cows that were allowed to meditate before the bolt was shot through their head or whatever, <laughs> they still have those natural hormones that, you know, and you're not a cow. And the same with um, chicken. If you think, well, you know, chicken you're getting away from it, it has as much cholesterol for your heart as full fat hamburger beef. Check it out in any cholesterol chart. White meat without the skin, still the same amount of cholesterol. And, uh, and at the same time, the chicken farmers are using these drugs, and the egg farmers, and the dairy industry uses more than any of them. So if you think by being a lacto-vegetarian, you're helping yourself, you need to think again. So what I did is I got my patients to become a vegan and get as much organic and raw food as possible. And wow, what a difference it made. And if you're ever thinking of making that leap and you haven't, try it tonight. Because in this kind of weather, I mean, all I ate today was one watermelon and an avocado. Yesterday, the same. You don't need a lot of fuel to drive this machine in this kind of weather, especially we're in Southern California here, not Alaska, not the North Pole. Um, so increasing your nutrition, it's what builds this. Those are some of the things to not do and increasing it. Like go to the Santa Monica market, organic market on Wednesdays and look at the produce. Talk to the farmers. Did anybody see the report uh, today on watermelons? They found that watermelons that were refrigerated in stores lost all their nutrition compared to watermelons that were fresh. And everybody thought refrigeration was good for fruits and vegetables and now we're knowing that it's destroying things too. The lycopene was reduced, the beta carotene was reduced. So, you know, get foods that maybe the farmer grew the day before or two days ago. I know in big cities we get away from that, and I live in Italy part of the year, and my grocery store has no refrigeration. Everything there is picked that morning. And you should see the health and the vibrancy of my neighbors there. And if you want to add something in, that's what my superfood's about. Superfood's about blasting your body with nutrition. I don't have to preach to the choir. I'm sure all of you in here uh, take your superfood. And if you're looking to do that extra nutritional boost, think about other ways to use it besides a morning drink. When I cut my avocado in half and pull out the pit, I put a little uh, olive oil and superfood in there. When I have a salad, I sprinkle superfood on it. When I'm having rice or a baked potato to energize it and lift it up, I put superfood. And if it's popcorn night, it's garlic, salt, and, not salt, garlic dehydrated and superfood. So, um, you know, find other ways to blast yourself with your nutrition too. So one of the big ways is to you know, I always say you can heal yourself of anything. Just stop doing what you're doing that makes you sick and start doing things that will create powerful health. Well, for those of you that are healthy and feel good, I'm just giving you a few ideas here of the fundamentals that you might use to increase your vitality, your energy, your level of health. Um, because like it or not, you are all getting older. And as you get older, the parts start to wear down. So with nutrition, we want to stop taking in the things that we know cause heart disease and cancer, okay? I come from a long line of Germans. And when I first heard about veganism, I thought it was an anti-German program. I mean, uh, I had breakfast, lunch, dinner, and dessert it was all blood for me. But, you know, so I, I'm not here on a save the whales thing. I'm on a save you thing. The thinner you keep your blood, the less cardiovascular disease and scarring you'll have in your brain and in your heart. The less animals you eat, you'll reduce your risk of cancer dramatically. And that's, the chances are that everybody in here is going to die from either heart disease or cancer. Um, and as far as adding in nutrition, fresh, live, organic, vegan food um, is one of the greatest things you can do. And if you're not perfect, well, join the club. I'm not perfect either. But I just want to give you some goals here that you can push yourself a little bit with um, and get your superfood in. 
Uh, as far as elimination and detoxification, my patients that never got sick and had tremendous energy and vitality did four flushes a year. So detoxification, your five-day detoxes. I designed those for all my patients so they could do them at work and at play and keep themselves healthy. It's not a big deal. You're not going to poop your pants. You're not going to double over in cramps. And you're not going to die. And they, you know, I, I just find I'm, I'm wondering what the big deal is. I mean, I, can, I figure the way I figured it is I can either spend my time at the Santa Monica Organic Market picking out some grapefruits and vegetables for me and doing a few five-day detoxes once a year, or I can go to the doctor's office and spend my time in the doctor's office waiting for someone to put a rod up my ass that feels like it's just gonna poke out my eye, or going to the emergency room a couple times a year with some drama and trauma, and it's gonna cost you a lot more money, and it's really gonna be uncomfortable and mean and horrible and a bummer, and you're gonna cry and hurt and write a big check. And uh, so I always look at it, what would I rather spend my time doing? Anyway, so my job is to influence you to do your detoxification. Um, my patients that did a quarterly detox program for a week never got sick. And the detox programs are not a big deal. They're easy. Gosh, I got them in a box now. The only way I could make it easier is if I came over to your house and did it myself. Um, so it's real easy stuff, and uh, you are my A-team here, so I have to make sure you're convinced of that. Detoxification, elimination, making sure your bowel, your liver, and your kidneys, your major detoxification organs are working. At least do the five-day detox for each of those once a year. That's, that, now we're down to three. But I'm just letting you know, my patients that did four never got sick. Movement and circulation, easy. You've got to move this thing. You know, you've heard it, if you rest, you rust. I mean, this body needs movement. And one of the biggest problems we have in this country is being overweight. And we just gotta move our bodies more and circulate the blood and circulate the lymph. And emotions and spirit, we all have work to do on our heads. And with every one of you tonight, we're gonna be talking about um, some work we can do to heal ourselves emotionally and spiritually, which is all part of being well. One of the ways my patients that were really healthy, kept really healthy too, was doing some cold and flu prevention, like every month in the winter months, you know, when everybody around you is going down, using their echinacea and supertonic. How many of you have used echinacea and supertonic and made a cold or flu go away? Yeah, okay. It's, it's, it's miraculous, it is. Um, it, it, I didn't invent echinacea, you know, I, it's a blessing for all of us. Um, I didn't invent garlic and onions and supertonic uh, herbs. They were a blessing to us. I just put a few things together and it works very well. And prevention is the key. Do you know what it's like when you get the flu and when you get colds? And I mean, it's summer now and we're not thinking about that, but preventing that is a lot easier than getting it and treating it. Okay, we all know that. So just, you know, keep yourself at peak performance. Use your herbs, use your natural healing routines. Choose some good foods, get rid of the bad ones, stay away from the bad habits, and what you do on Saturday night, I won't bother you there, you're on your own. If you wanna party a little bit, that's fine. If you really are done with your life in this phase, then I highly suggest the 30-day detox, which is just about everything that I talked about, plus a little more. And the reason I suggest that is because of the remarkable changes I saw in my patients, with myself, and with many of the employees now here that have done that program. Um, if, if you want to have a second or third or fourth chance in life, if you're tired of who you are and you want to be something else, um, that's the program. Okay, so tonight, questions. If nobody has any, we're going to get out early. Um, right here, sir. Yes, your question. We got a microphone coming up to you. And tell us your name. Okay, my name. Uh, you won't hear much, my, my but name is it's enough so the people in the back can hear you. Yes, my name is Henrik. Henrik. Thank you. You're the second Henrik I know, believe me. Oh, wow. Um, 
I know a girl, she's 25, and she has problem with psoriasis, mm -hmm. like skin problems. She's skin problems. She says she's a vegetarian, but yeah. so she doesn't eat a, 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 like the meat and stuff. Yeah. I've been telling her to do a liver flush, but she doesn't want to listen to me. Yeah. What, what would you recommend? Shock therapy, usually if people don't listen to me, a little jolt. You can get one of those things that's for if someone attacks you, a million volts, and you go, did you hear me now? Did you hear me now? Um, you know, one of the things we know about natural healing is we have to do it ourselves. You know, we can't heal anybody. I know a lot about health and healing naturally, but I've never healed anybody. I don't play like God or Dr. God. I haven't healed anybody. All my patients, all my customers, everybody healed themselves. So one of the first steps in natural healing is taking it on, taking on the responsibility of healing yourself. And, and it, it's nice to plant seeds, but you can make a lot of enemies and be very lonely um, if you just preach natural healing to everybody. Um, so this woman is how old? She's 25. 25, and she has a lot of psoriasis and eczema, or things with her skin. She sees a skin doctor who gives her some prescription pills and, um, <clears throat> and you know, some lotion and stuff. Yeah. And I this Okay, the first the thing I look at with the skin is the skin is actually, you could call it the largest elimination organ in the body. It's not supposed to be. It's like a backup organ. But if your bowel isn't working frequently, and I mean one time a day for every major meal you eat, or two or three times a day, or your urinary tract, your kidneys aren't excreting or being able to take out of your blood enough of the liquid waste, or your liver is not cleaning your blood, because that's its job, every second of every day is to clean your blood, if one of those systems is down, your skin gets asked to purge the toxins. Otherwise, I think maybe you blow up, okay? So I have found and, and this goes way back in natural healing, but I have found in my clinic that it's almost always the kidneys. When the kidneys aren't working great, the skin gets asked to be an elimination organ, and then you see psoriasis, eczema, and all types of skin disorders. So I would suggest all three of the five-day detoxes, but if you had to pick one, I would pick the kidney. If you had more information, like if she was constipated, like you could ask her, how often do you have a bowel movement? And there was any sign that she wasn't going two or three times a day and having good, complete bowel movements or any history of bowel disease, if there was, I would go with the bowel. The bowel's always first. But if her bowel works fine and everything's there, then I would put her on the, uh, the five-day uh, detox for the kidney and bladder. And that's a great place to go um, uh, when you have anything going on with the skin. And then, of course, stopping what might be going in that could be creating that, any liquids that really aren't food. <clears throat> Most of the liquids we see out in the world aren't what I consider food. She loves coffee. She loves coffee. Uh, that would be a good place to stop um, because it... <laughs> Um, because all these liquids we consume, that you know, coffee's an herb, but it's what I call a medicinal herb. And the medicinal herbs, you know, herbs are interesting. They can heat the house and they can burn it to the ground. Coffee's a medicinal herb and it's great. And I've used it in my clinic and I use it in formulas sometimes. But it's for medicine to be only used for a small amount of time. Um, and she's using it as a nutritional herb. Um, and it, like superfood, and coffee should never be used that way. It'll burn out your adrenals. Your adrenals sit on top of your kidneys. It'll affect your kidneys. Your kidneys won't metabolize waste. And I'm not expecting her to be perfect, but if she could eliminate bad liquids in and start detoxifying her kidneys and bladder, she'd see a huge change in her face in about a week, probably before she ended, or her skin, wherever it may be. So that's what I would look at, kidneys and bowel, but definitely detoxification. When your skin is acting up, it's time to get more poisons out of your body, stimulate and tone those detoxification organs. And um, okay, pick a number between one and 10. Eight. Eight. And she needs to express herself. Okay, the cards are always right. Let's see what it says. 
when I was speaking about the, the kidney detox too, what does a kidney detox do? It disinfects the kidneys, they have infection in them, and it also creates, it's a diuretic, it makes you urinate more, so it filters and cleans the blood by taking the liquid waste out. And I've always found that to be a cause behind psoriasis, but you should, you should always include some liver work later and some bowel work later, and like I said, if you ex expect the bowel could be a problem by just asking her how often you have a bowel movement. Um, you might find out the answer there. And uh, she needs to learn how to express herself. Even though she's not here, we'll share this with everybody. Um, these are all just little things from I, that I wrote earlier today that remind me of things that I used to say to my patients, uh, little extra surprises for them. And uh, so I'm going to read these because I wrote them and they're wonderful. Um, <laughs> We're taught from childhood to suppress our elimination. Um, maybe she just doesn't go to the bathroom when she needs to go to the bathroom. We're, we're taught to suppress daydreaming. The teachers used to slap me in the head. Um, we're taught to suppress our questions that we have, suppress sex, uh, suppress just about everything that I thought was fun or felt good. Um, one thing I've learned in life is that suppression doesn't work. It causes diseases, and this could be very well her problem because her skin now is getting diseased, disease, because something is being suppressed in her body, and I can guarantee you it's waste. Um, but we can suppress things with our mind, too. So it's something to ask her about. Um, you know, a big one we suppress uh, is sex. And um, so you might ask her about that if you're, if you can express that. Um, medicine suppresses almost everything, suppresses fever, suppresses pain, suppresses cough, suppresses cancer, cuts it out. And these things always return. So suppression doesn't get you well. Um, most people find it easier in life to go through it and not express themselves. Most people find it easier. And I can guarantee you that will make you sick. It will make you sick. And it's part of what's making this woman sick. How can you get what you want in life if you can't express it, if you can't say it? if you can't get it out. I think a big problem behind cancer is people with cancer not being able to express themselves. Psychologists now call it the C-type personality or the cancer type. People that you say something to and they go <clears throat> Woody Allen in one of his movies said, well I hold it inside and grow a tumor. That's my type. And that's what some people do. So um, important to share that with this person uh, that they need to learn uh, how to express themselves better. Next question. Right back here, two hands for one. That's a power ask. How are you doing, Dr. Schultz? I'm excellent. And you? I'm great, sir. My name is Herman. Herman. I was diagnosed with MS at the beginning of the year. Yeah. And it's affected my mobility. So I just want to know what do you suggest? And you were diagnosed when? Um, at the beginning of the year. At the beginning of the year. Yes, sir. And how is it affecting you currently? Um, my mobility. Okay. Okay. Excellent. We'll okay. go from there. Thank you. Okay. The first thing you remember is whenever anybody says, you know, uh, multiple sclerosis or muscular dystrophy or cancer or AIDS or arthritis or Alzheimer's or any of the diseases out there that are supposedly incurable, remember that almost all diseases, according to medicine, are incurable. And I don't have any idea how to cure incurable diseases, but your body does. And the way to heal yourself naturally is to create such a powerful, positive, healing environment around yourself that your body will heal itself of anything. I mean, the first day in Immunology 101, you learn that your immune system is designed to heal and repair you constantly. This thing is a self-repairing mechanism. I don't know how we've managed to mess it up so badly. <laughs> Actually, I do. Um, and, and it's not that you've done that. We all also have genetic. I mean, we get what our mom and dad had. And we are half our mom and half our dad. And there's nothing you can do about that. All we can do, and we all have diseases or weaknesses lurking in our body. 
There's no perfection out there. Every one of you in here has some disease or breakdown or illness lurking in your body. And if you get, as you get older, you will discover what it is. The key is to try to prevent it and stay healthy. And if something comes up, you just increase your level of health. So all my patients with MS that were having problems and noticing their initial problems were able to reverse those by just intensifying all their lifestyle programs. So it would be everything on this list, stopping anything that you consume that you think, you know, this isn't food, it isn't good for me. And stopping anything that you do that suppresses your elimination. And stopping anything you do that is being sedate, because now here's the big head trip, wow, I can't move, and my body doesn't work as well, and I shake a little bit, or I have a few tremors, who cares? Move through it. Push through it. I don't care. I trip. I fall down. I shake. I have nerve damage in this hand. And if I get it holding just right, I, can get a, I can't do it good tonight, but I can get a really good shake going here. Okay? So my body shakes a little bit. You know what? I'm alive. Okay? And we are all have little bumps and shakes and things going on. Um, so don't use that as a reason to stop your movement, your circulation. And inside, you know, remembering in your head and working with your mind not to let the medical doctors do any damage with their information, their diagnosis, because um, they don't have any success with that disease and their prognosis will be a bummer or a negative. And so just don't fall prey to that. Um, one thing that's important is super nutrition. One person that would take superfood, you would take it five times a day. You would make sure you have a juicer at home and that you're getting the finest organic fruits and vegetables, again, from the Santa Monica Wednesday market. Uh, I promoted that market when it was two stands years ago, and now it's taken over Santa Monica. Um, I used to have all my patients go there. I used to give tours there. Um, but you need blood transfusion of as much nutrition as you can get for your body to overcome this. If you're feeling at any time like you want to relax yourself a little bit and chill out, the nerve formula is a blessing. It's an antispasmodic for your muscles, for your nerves, and it'll just chill you out. And sometimes the, what we need most is just a little chill and a good night's sleep. Um, and uh, that would be another thing. And then make sure you do your detoxification, that you cleanse your body, because it could be something built up in your body that your liver's not getting rid of, or your bowel, or your kidneys, that needs to be flushed out. And move forward, hot and cold showers, when you're feeling shaky and trembly, get in to do the hot and cold. Stimulate those nerves, and, um, and don't, you know, buy into it. Um, okay, number between one and 10. Seven. Seven. Selfish. You got selfish. <laughs> you got the one. You got the one that's so big I had to write it on three freaking cards. And it's the only one that I had to write on three cards. Okay. So let's listen to this. Oh, this is funny. I guess I'll share it with you in a minute. When I told my patients to be healthier, they had to be more loving, every one of them thought I meant more loving to other people. But what I was talking about is being more loving to themselves, to love themselves. Uh, I, I had to train my patients to be more selfish, to be more self-centered, to be more self-involved. Um, why are those words considered bad words in our society? What's wrong with being self ish and self-centered and self-involved. You got to love yourself first. I know there's this idea that we take care of everybody else first and then we take care of ourselves last. And maybe that's good if you're on an airplane and it's on fire and heading towards the ground and you're helping people into parachutes. I believe in children and women first. I have no problem with that. But think about how much better this world would be if we stopped trying to fix it out there and started fixing it in here, taking care of business at home, in our bodies, in our household, and we worked out from there. If everybody would just do that, we'd have everything we want, the abundance, everything. 
I was at a, a, an ashram in India, and a woman stood up crying, asking a guru about, you know, how you know her husband didn't love her, her um, parents didn't, nobody loved her, and she was crying and sobbing and into boredom, into nausea. And finally, the guru said, "Look, how can you expect anybody to love you if you don't love yourself?" It's a powerful message. If you want more love in life, start loving yourself more, and you'll see more love come in. I trained with a great natural healer, Dr. Bernard Jensen, and we spent a whole week on alkalinizing your body, all the foods from dates to lima beans that can alkalinize your blood. Uh, all the things that you could do that could alkalinize your body powerfully and flush mucus and, mucus and acids out of your system. And at the end of the week, I was having dinner with him, and I said, what do you think of everything we talked about is the most powerful? And he said, well, really nothing we talked about. He goes, the most alkalinizing thing you can do for your body is love yourself. And it was a powerful message that I got from that great man. I had a man in class one day, and he said, well, we're not supposed to love ourselves. We're born in sin, and we're only supposed to love God. And I thought, oh, God, please protect me from some of your followers. <laughs> Nothing wrong with loving yourself, my friends. Think of what a better world it would be if we would just take care of ourselves. Um, here's one. This is something I read. It says, for some, building shrines and temples and worshiping in them is their way to find God. But another way is to transform ourselves into gods and goddesses so when we shout out the name of God, we hear the echo inside our being. Wow, strong statement. I was uh, preaching at a church, at a Baptist church down in Louisiana, and I knew I was in trouble when I checked into my motel room and they gave me a key and a fly swatter. <laughs> And before I got to speak, I went to the church, and all day I heard the preachers speaking. And a lot of what they were talking about is wanting to get God's energy or the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit to come through their body. But then when I looked at their bodies and I looked at what they were eating for lunch, I thought, man, if I was a cockroach, I wouldn't even want to crawl through their body. And they're expecting divine energy to come through. And I thought, you know, so my sermon that afternoon was God helps those that help themselves. And think about that. We're all expecting a miracle. Well, let me tell you, what you get is exactly equal to what you put out. And remember that. So I don't know why you got that message, but you did. So thank you for your question. Uh, let me stand here. You wiggled your hand. A microphone is coming. I'm Angela. And my you are Angela. Yes. Yeah. And um, my question is this. Um, I've been having a problem with knee pain. And before I answer that, I just want to remind everybody, if, if you're out there and all you want to know is the answer to why you have, you know, hyperpalmar hydrosis or something, remember that the answers to each individual apply to everybody, right? This is a learning experience. And even if you think this is far from what I want to know, you'll bump into somebody that needs these answers or you'll need them. And hyperpalmar hydrosis is just sweaty palms. And, I'm sure everybody has them. And okay. One other thing. Um, one other thing that. Well, wait a minute. I, I'm on knees. I'm on knees now. But you, you remember that in a minute. Okay. Okay. First of all, uh, knees hurting. Um, you know, I used to say, gosh, you know, I, I think I just don't have good knees. I spent my life in the martial arts to complain about. And then I thought, well, I'm fat. If you're carrying a lot of extra weight around, it's going to hurt your knees. Okay. So one of the first things you have to do is just. I didn't say you were fat. I said I was fat. I might know the martial arts, but you could be a faster gun, and I don't want to know how I'm going to have to protect myself. So, you know, transforming weight, dropping a few pounds certainly takes the pressure off your knees. Secondly, deep tissue. 
It's, I call it a miracle in a bottle. I made it for myself. I had torn out my knees, the cartilage, everything in my knees, blown out my ligaments and meniscus, and I rebuilt them myself with nutrition and all the great things I do, but partly my deep tissue. Um, it stimulates the circulation. It reduces inflammation. And beyond that, it's magic. I don't know how Arnica and St. John's Wort and Marigold really work, but around the world, they're the magic herbs for fixing muscles, bones, and tendons, and ligaments. And besides that, the wintergreen, uh, the menthol, the peppermint in there stimulates your cir blood circulation and reduces the inflammation. It's the magic cure. And the other natural healing magic cure is hot and cold. If you were to go into a shower and have one of those wands and just do hot and cold and hot and cold on your knee and then cover it with deep tissue, chances are the next morning the pain, the inflammation, and all that would be gone. But do it for a week, and it will probably be gone for a long time. Transform a little weight. Remember, if you're trying to build your body up, take the nutrition in. Part two of your question was? Well, no, I just want to say um, the doctor said that I have arthritis in that knee. Ah, great. Was he trying to stimulate your immune system and get you to have a blissed out day? I don't think so. Um, great. And you know what arthritis is? Incurable. Okay, so, you know, my advice to you and most people is always stop going to medical doctors unless you like negative information, big bills, toxic drugs that will rot out your body. and. Uh, and uh, give your, life, your whole life savings to them by the time you die. And um, so uh, stop going to doctors, stop listening to negativity. I'm telling you that that knee can be better in a week, guaranteed. Hot and cold, deep tissue, um, start moving your body a little more, doing a little stretching, and it's done and over. And Okay, let's see, we're gonna try a new one here. Left hand or right hand? Right. Let's see, is that your right or my right? My right, sex. Okay. So we're going to take your mind off your knee for a minute. Sex is healthy. It creates healing and health, physically and emotionally. We've just gummed it up with a lot of other stuff in all our culture and our society. Sex is good exercise that won't strain your knee, depending on the position you, you use. <laughs> Sex will stimulate your whole body's circulation. Sex moves your lymphatic fluid in your body that doesn't have a pump like your heart. Sex excites you and then relaxes you. Um, my patients were almost all, when we got down to it, screwed up because they weren't screwing enough. I guess that's the best way that I can explain this. And something that feels so good cannot be a horrible bad thing for you. That's the way your body is designed. Um, I always tell people, you know, without sex, none of us would be here. It's a normal, natural thing to do. Um, so, how, I, how I'm going to ask this. <laughs> how is your sex life? Not as good as it should be. Yeah, it's not My as good as it complains. Though. Yeah. And sometimes when we don't have enough sex, we start paying attention to all the other little things in our life like arthritis and knees. And sometimes when we have enough sex, we forget all the little things and bumps. Um, can anybody agree with that one? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And so. I know that's not really the answer you came to hear, but the cards never lie. They're never wrong. And so um, it's something to look at. And sex will naturally help you lose a few pounds, too, and feel better about yourself, and feel loved and physically relaxed. And it's a happening thing. I, I, if you want, I could ask if you know there's any valuable people in here that might. I've got her so embarrassed. Look at all the hands. The minute I start talking about sex, everybody's got a question. Okay. 
This is really, really difficult. I have to really scan. It's right here. We got a microphone. Yes, my name is Logan. Um, what Your name is? Logan. Logan. Yes. Thanks with for the coming. the five-day detox, what exactly happens to your body during that time? And which one? Because the, uh, they're different. The bowel, the liver, the kidneys? The bowel. Or, okay, but, and we'll but, talk about the bowel and we'll talk about them in general. Yeah. One of the things that I ask you to do in a five-day detox is really limit what's going in. And the minute you do that, your body goes, thank you, Lord, because most of us have way too much going in. And so the minute you just start drinking more water and more fluids and stop eating a lot of food, because I say on the five-day detoxes, it's great if you could do a little raw food on day one, a little raw food on day five, and the middle three days, maybe just stop eating and drink liquids. I mean, you don't have to, but it would be really nice to do that. Just doing that alone, your body starts dumping its waste and its toxins. Um, you could call it juice fasting. I like to call it juice flushing. But just by doing that, you, start, you take the pressure off your body. Uh, you, anybody ever eat and you watch your stomach grow? I mean, the amount of blood and energy it takes to digest food and then assimilate food and then eliminate food is tremendous. That's why everybody notices that after you eat, you run out of gas. This is why professional athletes and actors and people like that, they never eat before they have to go on. They eat the night before, but right before the basketball game or whatever someone might be doing, you don't see them sitting down and having 14 baked potatoes um, because it takes a lot of energy to digest. So just stopping eating gives you more energy and starts naturally getting rid of waste in your body. Um, most people, as far as the bowel, uh, five-day bowel detox is, goes, most people in America don't go to the bathroom enough. When I've traveled the world, I've seen that normal, healthy, primitive people eating natural foods of their area and just gathering and hunting will have about one bowel movement a day per meal that they eat. Um, and it averages two to three. In America, the average is three to four bowel movements a week. So if you calculate that out, compared to primitive natural people, we go 72,000 less times in our lifetime than they do. 72,000 less bowel movements. And of course, America is the number one country in digestive and bowel diseases in the world. We've won that prize. And according to Merck's manual in the medical books, they say that every American, every American will have some type of bowel disease if they live long enough, especially diverticulosis. So one thing we know is that we're plugged up. I had a man in Hawaii who used 50 capsules of intestinal formula and overnight on the toilet lost 50 pounds. Now, most of us aren't extreme, but if you want to read some great, cool, record-breaker bowel stories, uh, make sure you read the bowel book, Healing Bowel Disease Naturally. It's really fun stuff in there. Jokes you can tell at a party that no one else will have. Um, so um, the bowel detox does two things. First off, it stimulates you to have more bowel movements. Formula number one has three herbs in it, senna, cascara sagrada, and aloes that stimulate more muscular movement of your bowel. It's like going to the gym, they make your bowel stronger. And, it, and those muscles contract and that's what gets rid of the waste. Because uh, some people have just suppressed it or just don't have good natural muscular action in their bowel, natural peristalsis. It secondly destroys off infection that's often in your bowel if it isn't working enough. Um, it can also stimulate your liver. The barberry in it uh, flushes out and stimulates bile and flushes out your liver. And um, it also will destroy infection because of the garlic in the formula. But formula number one is to get you going. Regardless of what you're eating, drinking, thinking, or doing, formula number one will create a bowel movement. In fact, I've said that I can even have a dead person have a bowel movement with that formula. And the reason is that the chemicals, the anthraquinone, a modin in formula number one, in those three herbs, Seneca, Cascara, Scrut, and Aloes, actually has a chemical connection with your intestines and will make them move. And in naturopathic school, I took a section of a large bowel and put those herbs on it, and the bowel moved and wasn't even in a person's body. So, you know, hey, 
we can make the dead poop. Now, <laughs> you're probably not going to hear that anywhere else, and I'm almost a little embarrassed I said it myself. Um, but that's what formula one does. Formula number two then goes in and draws out of your bowel any old material that was in there. And we've had incredible stories. I had a woman that was in a car accident, and, and eight years later we did a bowel cleanse and windshield glass was coming out. Um, I've had a woman that had old coins come out after doing formula number two that were dated when she was a kid, and she used to swallow coins when she was a kid and kept them in her bowel her whole life. But remember, our, our, our large intestine, our colon, has folds. And according to the medical books, every American, if they live long enough, will have diverticulosis, and that is just a herniation of the wall of the bowel, like a weak spot in a balloon or a tire that bubbles out, and it's impacted with old material. And formula number two goes in and vacuums out all the old waste that's in the nooks and crannies. And if that waste stays there, it goes, seeps into your bloodstream, and now you basically have poop, that's the medical term, in your blood. And that's not going to feel good. You're not going to be a happy person. You're not going to have clear thoughts. You're not going to have a lot of energy. So Americans need a lot of bowel cleansing. And so the five-day detox for the bowel will get in there and make your bowel work more to eliminate the waste you have and draw out the old stuff. And anybody that has a history of bowel disease should do it to you two, three, or four times, five times in a row. Uh, I had many people with bowel cancer that did it four and five times in a row and got rid of all their polyps and all their cancer. Doing just cleaning it up, scrubbing it up. Um, okay, let's see. Left hand, right hand. Uh, your left or my left? My left. Your left. I can do this. Your left is there. That would be this side. Change. Ah, this is perfect for you. I thought about it, and I thought about what is the only thing that really is guaranteed in the universe, and that is change, that everything is in a constant state of change, everything. I occasionally used to go and, and buy a few things, and the things that I bought weren't very good. They were cheap and they broke. And then I went back to about two years later, and they were still selling the same things. And then, fascinatingly, at a black tie dinner somewhere, I got an opportunity to sit next to the CEO of And I asked him, I said, why do you have things in your store that are crap and continue to sell them? And he looked at me and he said, people don't like change. And I thought, he's right. People don't like change. In order for us to stay well and healthy, you have to be able to be willing and accept and be yahoo and celebrate change. Because you're changing. You're going in one direction or the other. You're either getting sicker or you're getting healthier. You're either getting stronger or you're getting weaker. You're either getting less vitality or you're getting more vitality. And I want to feel good, have a great long life and a lot of fun. And I love change. Life is change, and the fun part of this is what you're going to change into to tomorrow. What's going to happen tomorrow? And my big sign there behind Roy is tomorrow is what you believe and do today. And I've really learned that. You can create anything you want in life.